نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل عقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من اخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین اللہم ارن الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعا اللہم ارن الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Today we will start our discussion with verse 83 of Surah Al-Baqarah وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهَ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِخْسَانًا وَذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسَنًا وَأَقِيمُوا السَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّقَاةَ سُمَّ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِنْقُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ مُعْرِزُونَ Allah says, And recall when we took the covenant from the children of Israel, enjoining upon them, Do not worship Allah, and to parents do good, and to relatives, orphans, and the needy, and speak to people good words, and establish prayer, and give zakah. Then you turned away, except a few of you, and you were refusing. We've been talking about verse 83 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned his ten commandments which were given to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and the people of Bani Israel. The first was the right of Allah, belief in the oneness of Allah. The second was وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِخْسَانًا And in the last session, I explained the rights of the parents and uh, we narrated the words of Prophet Wasallam to explain the importance of the right of the parents and the rewards of obedience to the parents and the punishments of those who are disobedient to the parents and they ignore the rights of the parents. Now today I shall be discussing as to who around us can be considered in the list of our parents and then how should we behave to them and how do we need to relate to our parents. I think we would now I would want you to all understand and relate that we need to know that when Allah is explaining the rights of parents and Prophet Sallallahu is emphasizing the rights and highlighting the rights of parents, we need to know who around us are coming in this relationship. Who are our parents? Our mother and the father, then that is our actual mother and the father, then our maternal or paternal grandparents, and then obviously great-grandparents and then our mother-in-law and father-in-law also come up in the same category. There is a Hassan Hadith which is reported by the Prophet ﷺ. It is in the books other than the six books of a Hadith but it is a Hassan Hadith that Prophet ﷺ talked to one of his companions and said you have three fathers one is your real father, one is your wife's father, and third is the teacher who taught you. So for a husband, the wives, the wife's father and the mother, and for the wife, the husband's father and the mother also come up to the level of her own or his own father and the mother. I always say and I always believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been very kind and gracious. 
before marriage if we had two feet under under which our paradise was and we had one door to jannah our father then after marriage these are going to multiply by two lucky is the one who avails and unlucky and ill fate is the one who stays deprived and very pathetically very poorly pathetically i i hear some scholars saying that for her are her parents and for him are his parents and i hear women saying very proudly my parents are for me my mom my dad for me and your dad and your mom for you really dividing parents do you divide the bounties and the blessings of allah no then how come we dividing our parents and people very very aggressively come up and say there is islam in quran it is not the woman is not supposed to look after the in-laws there's no concept really how can we deprive ourselves of all these bounties of all these rewards now the next thing which i would definitely want to sum up and to highlight that obviously feeling the rights of the parents very clearly now how are we supposed to behave and relate to our mannerism i'll be going point wise number 1 respect and regard we need to respect them we need to regard hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu saw a young man with an old man and he asked the old man that is he your father and then he gave three pieces of advice he said look never call him by his name never walk in front of him and let him have a seat before you this is what this is an advice of respect for the parents the second point humbleness and being humane in front of the parents allah says in quran wahfis lahuma junaha dhulli min ar-rahma lower down lower down your shoulders even in front of your parents in respect don't stand arrogantly don't talk arrogantly be humbled and and i'll ask all of you how how can children be arrogant in front of their parents how can we proud in front of our parents what we are what we are today where we are today what we have achieved gained whatever we reached in our lives is obviously obviously no doubt because of the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but then allah with his blessings had made it all possible for us because of the struggle the effort the help the guidance the love and the support of our dear parents so how can we think about being arrogant in front of them i just narrated about hazrat haris bin noman he was so humble he used to lower down his gaze and he used to lower down his head and he used to cross his hands and fold his arms and he never used to speak loud his mom was old she was weak she used to like mumble in his mouth and there were many times he couldn't understand what she was mumbling but he never used to shout at her he would never used to call her bad words oh mom speak loud oh mom why are you mumbling no she he just used to keep quiet and he used to go out and then going in the courtyard he used to ask his wife what was mom saying so we need to be humble the third point patience and tolerance allah says in verse number 23 of surah bani israel fala taqul lahuma uff fala tanhar huma don't even say ah and don't scold them they are old 
they are weak they'll forget at times they can't hear they can't speak they can't express they cannot walk they cannot remember the food might spill they might spill water they might just become like little children but just remember how how tolerant they were when we were children when we forgot when we could not speak when we could not walk and when we used to spill when we could not remember how they used to hold our finger and make us learn how to walk how they hurt how they got hold of my hand and taught me how to write so remember how tolerant they were to us when we were children and also think back how tolerant we are to our own children so stay patient stay cool and be tolerant the fourth point i'm going point wise i won't want any one of us to miss any one of these points we're not going to get away with this the fourth point be kind and merciful and soft and polite to them the way we talk the way you talk to them the way you lift them up the way you feed them the way you look at them the way you deal with them they are they are weak they are sick their bodies are already hurting and aching to jerk them to give them jolting they are dependent on you be soft be polite be merciful and be very very kind allah is not kind to them who is not kind allah will not be merciful on them who is not who not merciful number 5 look after their requirements their needs and care for their feelings and their desires and try to fulfill their wishes they fulfilled our wishes they they completed our requirements they were sensitive about our desires hazrat imam zainul abidin he was hasan bin ali he, he had a mother who was widowed and she was old and she was sick and she was weak and she was also semi blind and you know what the son used to do all the way from his work place he used to walk back to his house to have lunch with his mother and there were two or three days when one of his friends accompanied him and the friends he observed that imam zainul abidin used to wait for his mother to eat and when she used to finish or when she used to stop eating then only he used to eat and the friend friend asked him i don't understand you come all the way walking back rushing hurrying that i want to go and have lunch with my mother and when you come here you don't eat with her and you let her eat and then you eat imam zainul abidin said my friends why must it be so hard for you to understand and comprehend the matter is that i don't eat with her simply because i'm afraid that i might take a piece of meat which she likes and so i let her eat first and then i eat the remaining food afterwards sixth serve them do service to them attend to them like like the leader of the women of jannah hazrat fatima radhiyallahu ta'ala anha served her father she used to wash his clothes she used to wash his hair she used to comb them she used to oil them and then hazrat awais karani radhiyallahu uh, rahmatullah alayh he was a tabi he was not awarded the level of sahaba ikram although he embraced islam in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he could not come to meet and to be in the company of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that is why he is he was not a sahaba and he was not amongst the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
and despite accepting Islam, he just did not come and visit the Prophet ﷺ for the mere, mere reason that he was busy looking after his old debilitated mom. And you know what? He even performed Hajj after the death of his mother. But he has been given the, the name of Khairu Tabain, the best of Tabain. Okay, now the seventh point. Take out time for them. Take out time for your parents. You don't know. Believe you me. Believe you me. You just don't know how much time is left. And you don't know how soon they will depart and how quickly they will depart. Then leaving you behind, regretting and remembering the days when you could give them time. Give them time. Give them time and attention when you have time and when you have your parents. Prophet has promised in a Sahih Hadith that when any one of you, when any one of you lovingly looks at the face of her mother, of his or her mother, then all your sins will be forgiven. And in another hadith, the Prophet says, then he will be he will be awarded with the reward of a Hajj Mabarur, the person who is who is lovingly glancing are looking at the face of his or her mother, then the person will be rewarded by a reward of a Hajjim Mabrur. Sitting at your home and looking at your mother or mother-in-law, you know that is the difficult part of the story. You will be rewarded by Hajjim Mabrur. Prophet said this and the companions asked, what if we look again? <coughs> Prophet said you will be rewarded with another reward again. And then another Sahih Hadith Prophet said that when children sit with their old parents to entertain them, then before they get up, all their sins will be forgiven. So give them time, give them attention, talk to them, and then then I would I would urge you, I would request you to express to express your love to talk about how how much you love them how much you care for them how important they are for you demonstrate your love exhibit your love kiss them kiss them kiss them on the forehead kiss them on their hands hug them sit with them lie down with your mom Express your love. Remember they used to hold you close? Remember the way they used to cuddle you? Remember the way they used to kiss you and hug you? They need this now. They need this now. They do not need the service of your maid servants or your men servants. Or your male nurses or your female nurses you've brought with your money or you've hired with your money for their service and looking after. No, they want your hands. They want your, your body to be cuddled with. These old parents are like children. And then the eighth point of exhibiting your love and the best thing the ninth point is pray for them. Pray for them as much as you can. In the verse number 24 of Surah Bani Israel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us the prayer as well. Qul, say, Rabbirham huma qama rabbayani sahira. O Allah, be kind to them the way that they were kind to me when I was a child. When I needed their kindness, when I couldn't eat, when I couldn't sleep, when I couldn't read, when I couldn't walk, when I could understand, when I couldn't just survive without their kindness and they were kind to me, be kind to them. Remember this, remember this 
12 of the Quran and keep it in the tashahud of your salah. That is before you say salah. In the last part of your tashahud, keep it in your salah. May your parents be alive and may, may have they passed on. It is a beautiful, it is a beautiful supplication which we can all make for our parents. And then we all need to relate to the rights of the parents even after the death of the parents. One of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ asked him the issue that his parents had passed off and what right does what right do they still hold on him? Hazrat Abu Usaid Saadi Raziallahu Ta'ala and who reports in Abu Da'ud and Ibn Majah that the Prophet ﷺ was sitting with his companions and a person came and he was from the tribe of Banu Salma, the messenger says, uh, the narrator says, and he said that, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are there some rights of my parents on me which I have to fulfill even after they have died? That is, my parents have died, okay, I was sensitive enough that I was, I, I was duty bound and it was obligatory for me to sensitively pay their rights as long as they were alive but now that they have passed away and they have died are there still some rights of my parents which i have to fulfill these were the people who were sensitive extremely sensitive about the rights of their fellow beings prophet said he told him three rights he said pray for mercy and forgiveness on their behalf the first right of the parents who are deceased is to pray for their mercy and forgiveness. Second, to fulfill, to fulfill the rightful will or the bequest they may have made. We talked about it in the orders of inheritance that it is allowed to make will or bequest of one's one third of the property. So if parents have made a rightful or a righteous will, then it is the duty of the par children after the departing of the parents or after the death of the parents that they fulfill that will or the bequest they made. And to pay due regards to the relations of kin. And third, to be and fourth, to be respectful to their friends. So these are the four points Prophet said. I, I'm sorry, I said three previously. There are four things: to pray for them, to uh, complete or fulfill their righteous will, and to be nice and generous and kind to the relations to their relations of the kin, and to be respectful to the friends. And then, being praying for the parents. What is the merit of praying for the deceased parents? Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who lets us know a very big promise of the Prophet sallallahu and it is a very big hope for all the children as well. Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in a Sahih Hadith that Prophet sallallahu said that it happens sometime that the parents of a person or one of them dies and he has been disobedient to the parents. You know, parents are those around us whose rights we cannot repay. We just cannot repay. And humans are but to err. And there are so, so many chances that we might have been disobedient to them. So we all very intensely need to listen to this that there one of the parents has has died and he has been disobedient to them in their lifetime and hence incurred their displeasure but after their death if this child was disobedient after their death if he prays to allah with a sincere heart to have mercy on them and to forgive them their sins then Allah will thereupon declare the disobedient child as an obedient child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand, comprehend, relate, remember and dutifully pay all the rights of our living, 
or our deceased parents. Allah, forgive our shortcomings, forgive the shortfalls, forgive all which we wronged, forgive all we said wrong, forgive when we hurted them, forgive when we were rude to them, forgive when we displeased them, forgive when we were disrespectful to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make us humbled in front of them, make us respectful, make us obedient, make us kind, make us merciful. Let us spend our time let us spend our time on them. Help us give, give them love. Guide us to show our affection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make us all the children among the children who, who, can serve their, who can serve their parents kindly, politely, gently. Help us look after their requirements. Guide us, guide us to fulfill their wishes. Allah help us be patient and be tolerant. Allah help us respect them and regard them. Allah make us one of them who 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 very who continuously be praying for our parents and accept all our prayers for our parents and accept all their prayers for us and make us worthy of their prayers. I would end my talk by the words Let's learn them all and remember these words and recite them in your salah. I would say again, Rabbirham homa kama rabbayani sagira. Rabbirham homa kama rabbayani sagira. Rabbirham homa kama rabbayani sagira. And for all whose parents have departed, Allahumma gfir lahum. Allahumma gfir lahum. Allahumma gfir lahum, warhamhum, warhamhum, wa'afihim, 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 wa'akrim nuzulahum, wa'akrim nuzulahum, wa'akrim nuzulahum. Allahumma hasibhum hisabin yasira, Allahumma hasibhum hisabin yasira, Allahumma hasibhum hisabin yasira. Allahumma adkhilhum jannata ma'al abrar. Allahumma adkhilhum jannata ma'al abrar. Allahumma adkhilhum jannata ma'al abrar. Rabbana taqabul minna inna ka anta samiul alim. Watub alayna inna ka anta tawabur rahim. ربنا لا تزي قلوبنا ربنا لا تزي قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك الرحمة إنك أنت الوهاب سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Amin Summa Amin. Inshallah, tomorrow we will uh, continue the discussion of verse number 36 of Surah An Nisa and we will be talking about Wabithil Qurba, the relations of kin, Wal Yadama Wal Masakin, the orphans and the poor and the needy. So the underprivileged class of the society and our relatives and relations of kin. This inshallah again is a very important topic and I would uh, request all of you to advise to invite as many as you can to come and watch our lecture live or uh, I would also request all of you to share the lecture of uh, today uh, of Bil Walidaini Ikhsana with as many as you can so that you can help people relate the rights of their parents in today's society as people are really, children are really 
uh, mistreating and being very ill tampered to their parents so uh, if you want your children to be obedient to you and you want your daughter-in-laws and your son-in-laws and you yourself want to be uh, doing the same then uh, obviously you can share the lectures which are coming to you uh, in your on your whatsapp groups and as well on your profiles and the purpose of all this when I request you is to help us spread the teachings of Islam. Jazakallahu khairan kaseera fi amanillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.